This is the popular team scheduling app when I work. And this is the Shifts app for team scheduling that is part of your Microsoft Teams subscription. If you're a When I Work user, shifting to Shifts might save you nearly $500 a year for scheduling a team of 10. So should you think about moving to Shifts? So jumping into Teams, if you don't have a team that has all the people that you want to schedule in it, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new team for that group. So let's just go ahead and create a group from scratch. We're going to call this uh, scheduling demo, create it, and then we'll go ahead and add a couple of other users. So now we've got them added into the team. We're just going to head over to the ellipsis on the left side of Teams. And we're going to go into our Shifts app. And if you don't see the Shifts app here, you can just use this Find App box to find Shifts. So Shifts gives you a list of the teams that you are a member of, but you can only create um, a Shifts instance in a team that you are an owner of. So the only one that I've got ownership rights on is the scheduling demo. So I'm going to go ahead and create my Shifts instance there. And it just asks you to confirm the time zone that we're going to schedule in. So once you're into your shifts, you'll see that the only person who's actually listed on the schedule right now is the user that I'm logged in as, Miriam. So the next step that you're going to want to take is to add users from your team into your scheduling group. And you can see I've got a single unnamed group here. You can add additional groups to your schedule if you want to, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and add some people. So I'm going to add Adele and I'm going to add Pradeep. Now you'll see that the only options I got for people to add are people who are in my team. So you must add your users to your team before you try to add them to your schedule. But you do not have to have every member of your team on the schedule. So just be aware of that. So now we've got shift set up. Let's take a quick look at how it works. So if you want to create a shift, you could just jump into any block here. So if I wanted to create a shift on the 8th for Miriam, I can just go ahead and add a shift. I can put in the times that I want. I can alter them here if I need to. I can add labels in here. I can add notes. I can add an unpaid break. And I can even add activities to the shift if I want to. I can save that and it appears on here and if I want to copy that shift to someone else I can just click on the three dots, copy it and paste it. Now if I want to create shifts that aren't assigned to anyone so they're open shifts that people could take then I can move a shift up to open shifts or I can create one directly up there and so you, you have complete flexibility in how you want to build your schedule. If you want to build a, a schedule model along the top in open shifts and then move them to people, or uh, if you want people to nominate the shifts that they're going to take, uh, for example, you have complete flexibility around that. Um, and you can, you can copy and paste to other dates as well if you need to, so you can see there. So it will give you a running total of the number of hours that someone is scheduled for. Um, and so you can keep track of whether anyone is going beyond the hours that they are normally working or whether they're going into overtime. You can also copy your entire schedule. So you can come up to copy schedule and you can copy the schedule in its entirety to a new period and you could choose what you want to include and you can choose which groups if you have multiple groups that you want to copy. Now in terms of groups we can add groups in here so say we had a front of house group say and then we're going to add another group we're going to call this the admin group and say I want Adele in the admin group as opposed to in the front of house group I'll just go ahead and add her down here and then if I want to I can remove her from this group up here and so I can now 
schedule independently for my admin group and my front of house group. And when I'm ready to publish my schedule, I can just go ahead and say share with team. It'll ask me what periods I want to share and I can go ahead and share. Um, and it will show me that this has been successfully shared with my team. And you can see because the latest version is the version that's been shared, you can see this, this box up here for share is greyed out. But as soon as I um, add something else to my schedule, I get that share with team option again because I need to share that new shift that I've added. If I just jump in edit this shift, you can see that we can color code our schedule. Um, we can add labels if we want to. And then you can see it changes what the shift looks like. We can add an unpaid break, which will alter the number of hours. And we can even add activities if we want to. So if there's particular things that we want our staff to do, so stocking shelves, we can put in that we want an hour of stealth shop, uh, shelf stocking. And then that's going to be green. I'm going to save that. And you can see I've now got these changes in here. So for the next part of this demo, I've just copied some shifts onto the admin group for a date in the future. So jumping across to Adele's view of this, you can see that Adele is looking at these three shifts in the future. And we had open shift on the 15th when she isn't working. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say I want to request this shift but then perhaps I can't work on the 14th so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer that shift to someone else so let's select a team member I'm going to offer it to Miriam I'm going to say I can't work and I'm going to send the request so jumping back over to Miriam's view you can see that Miriam as the manager is being asked to accept or decline the offer so I'm going to accept that and being uh, asked to accept the, the uh, request for a shift. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to approve that. So now jumping back to Adele's view of shifts, you can see that her schedule has been updated pending uh, those changes that she uh, requested that have just been approved. So the other thing that Adele can do is she can actually put in a request for time off. So let's say she's not available on the 17th to work and we want to take a vacation day. She can send in that request and Miriam will get to approve that in exactly the same way as the approvals we just saw. And back over in Miriam's view, you can see that we can approve this vacation request. And if we jump back to the schedule and take a look at next week, you can see that Adele now has a vacation day on the 17th and you can see that Miriam has got the shifts that, that was moved from Adele onto the 14th. Now the other thing that shifts can do for you is that we can use the time clock. So if I go ahead and click clock in here it introduces me to the time clock I just click next it asks me if I want to uh, include uh, GPS detection of the clock in. I, I don't at this point, so I'm just gonna say turn on. And then it allows me to clock in for a shift or any of my users to clock in for a shift and it'll keep track of how long I've been working. And you can do all of this from the mobile app as well from the, um, as well as doing it from the desktop. So if you've got workers who aren't on a desktop all day, then you can certainly use this um, with them as well. And what that allows you to do is once you have all your uh, payroll or your time information in there, you can export a time sheet for a particular period of time and it'll export this report that you can use uh, to import into your payroll. If we jump over to settings, then you can see we do have some controls here. We can um, set what the first day of the week is to set that alongside your payroll periods. Um, and you can also change the types of requests that you can, um, you can put in if you're an employee. But there isn't a lot of control in settings. I, I mean, a lot of other platforms like When I Work have a lot more sophistication when it comes to the types of settings in there and, and what you can set up. So all of the core features are here in shifts, um, but there's certainly uh, none of the bells and whistles that you get when you're using a dedicated scheduling platform. 
So the Shifts app in Teams is a surprisingly full-featured solution for team scheduling, considering it's included in your standard Teams license. However, it doesn't do everything that platforms like When I Work already do, and it does lack some of the finesse in aspects like how you create shifts and how you move them around the screen. However, in most cases, I think there's a good argument to say that shifts can do what you need in terms of team scheduling. However, just remember that a prerequisite to using shifts is to be a member of a team, meaning that you're going to need a team's license for that user. I hope this video has been useful to you and given you a good introduction to the Shifts app. If it has, then please give this video a like. And if you enjoy content like this, then please do subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye bye.